Welcome to Draga, where we tell a dumb story with even dumber drawings. I am, of course, your drawing master, Caldwell Tanner. And I am your halfling rogue, Lexi Shortstack. I'm Gina, also known as Jacob. (laughs) Gina the Jacob. And I'm Julia, playing the Aladrin fighter, Roxa. That's right. All three are here. All are gathered. If you recall, y'all are just been trapped on this uh, dimensional gateway machine and your entire bodies have turned to fire. Yeah, it started to burn. Mm -hmm. It was a bad scene. It was a bad time. We had been tricked. Yeah. This whole thing was a big... A big trick. It was one big sick trick. Uh, It's going to rack up a lot of points for Francis. (laughs) (laughs) Better stick the landing. In fact, yes, it is time to stick the landing. Uh, But before we do that, before we dispel this dimensional dilemma, I've got a quick recap for all of y'all. How does that sound? Mm, Lovely. Okay, now you can see here I've got this delicious recap apple or recapple. Uh, (laughs) I've got one for each of you to enjoy, of course. Mm. Uh, It's a delicious treat that will cause you to perfectly hallucinate the events of previous dragas. (laughs) Um, and yes, before we eat them, there are several side effects oh. worth mentioning. So yeah. let's Does just it go. keep a doctor away? or It keeps a doctor away, but also grows a small doctor inside of you, mm. out of your pancreas. Yeah, that let sounds me, like benefits. Let me get one of those. Yeah, you want to get one of those? Yeah, yeah. let me get uh... Oh, this is wet. Yeah. This is a wet apple. It's wet and crunchy. It's actually, scientists found a way to make it twice as wet as a normal <laughs> apple, <laughs> which oh. I think is interesting and fun. No. So... <laughs> I hate this bit. <laughs> <laughs> when last we met, the Ladies Book Club had finally managed to track down Hollis Quirt, a circus necromancer turned butler who used a bone servant named Pukanichi to murder Daryl, a goblin inventor and his former boss. Hollis was later instructed by a mysterious caller to abduct Daryl's partner, Francis. Having been apprehended by Allblart and his squadron of mall cops, however, Hollis revealed that Pukanichi had taken Francis to Daryl's old observatory in the Clinix Mountains. Knowing that you won't get paid until Francis is rescued and this case is laid to rest, you departed for the Wily Woods, the huge foreboding forest that surrounds Mount Clinix. Once there, you encountered Bronson Craster, a monster master in league with Pukanichi. Bronson challenged you three to a monster duel and sent out his toughest creatures, including a haunted stump, a fat mutant Pikachu, and a Digimon made of Hot Topic accessories. Unfortunately for Bronson, however, these bonds were no match for the might of the ladies' book club. Regina used her cool girl abilities to ignore the problem to death, Legsy powered up Jeffers the Spider with a dentist dollop, and Roxa, with the help of slimeless Kyle, summoned the ultimate being known only as Sfeel. After thoroughly thrashing Bronson's beast, the Monster Master said you could pass and confirmed your victory by giving you a small token, the key to Daryl's briefcase. Apparently, Francis had left it behind while Pukanichi dragged him towards the observatory. Inside, you found a recording device containing Daryl's audio diaries. And so, with Bronson in tow, you began listening to the diaries while setting out for Clemix Mountain. As the recording progressed, you learned that Daryl had been haunted by strange dreams of a soupy nebula slowly being devoured. In an attempt to locate this realm, Daryl and Francis built a dimensional portal device. The recording ended with Daryl revealing that in one of the failed experiments, he glimpsed a strange room that gave him insight into how to perfect the machine. You then entered Daryl's observatory lair, where you found Francis tied to a chair in the center of the room. Sensing a trap, you approached hesitantly, but were accosted by Pukanichi and then imprisoned in beams of hard light. Francis then revealed that he, Pukanichi, and Hollis Quirt were all working together. To further explain, he queued up a hologram that showed Francis, Daryl, and a diamond-headed individual named Pugene attempting to open the gateway. This time, the experiment succeeded, but the gate was unstable and Daryl was sucked through the portal. Before he disappeared, Daryl explained that for the machine to work, they'd need three perfectly linked souls. Daryl then let go of Francis's hand and the gate closed, leaving Francis and the newly formed Pugilax alone amidst the rubble. As the hologram cut out, Francis explains his master plan. I knew that I'd only get one shot of this, so it had to be perfect. I needed three souls, and I needed to know for certain that they were all linked. And so I came up with a series of tests to determine how capable and connected you three truly were. I installed a pugilax in the Hungry Goat Tavern, led you into a monster-infested lab, and and even faked footage of Daryl's death using Dennis's shape-shifting abilities. The final test was to see if you three could work together to find me after Pukanichi's fake abduction. And you passed spectacularly. So if this doesn't work, then I'm out of ideas. And that is where we are now. Ooh. Now that's Ooh. some exposition. Oh, 
exposition nalicious. <laughs> Dump it right on me. <laughs> you three are standing on this dimensional transporter. Your body's forming a complete circuit of infinite recursive energy. And every cell in your body is burning. Ow. Oh. Stop. <laughs> Ow. Stop. <laughs> it Ow. burns like nothing you've ever felt. Brighter and hotter until the point you can't take it anymore. And then all of a sudden, it stops. Oh, that's good. And then there is silence. Well, relative silence. <laughs> <laughs> and then nothing. You feel yourself getting lost, fading into the void. And so you reach out. And in the last moment before you disappear, you feel each other's presence pulsing in the darkness. You grab your friend's hands and hold on tight. You become this glowing triangle in the infinity of the cosmos. And as you drift, you suddenly feel someone else. <gasps> it's Daryl. Daryl. We found him. <laughs> he was in the cosmos the him. whole time. <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> As you're spinning <laughs> in this cosmic formation, you two whisper who Daryl is and give uh, Roxa an even more thorough recap of everything that's happened. <laughs> Roxa, eat one of these apples. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> so your triangular star descends upon his form and then suddenly the astral void around you begins to spin faster and faster until you're a column of light and then you open your eyes and you're back in the observatory. And as you look over to the portal, you realize that Daryl's back too. You found him. Nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that happy to see him at this juncture, to be honest with you. <laughs> you see Francis runs over to him and gives him this big hug. Daryl, it's, it's you. I, I never thought it's you. As soon as Daryl lays eyes on Francis, the confusion melts from his face. He looks at him and says, Oh, oh my God, it's really you. Oh, Francis, I, I missed you so much. He puts his forehead on Francis's, but then pauses. Francis, you shouldn't have opened the portal. Now that the gate is open, it can finally come through. Huh? Daryl, wh what are you saying? What is it? You see Daryl turns his head back to the portal. No, 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 no. This is what it wanted. It devoured an entire universe. Then it fell into a deep slumber. In its dreams, it reached out to me. <sighs> that damn rune! I should have known. It used us as a tool to open a door to our world. Daryl, you're not making any sense. What is it? Daryl looks at Francis and then over to you three. You know what it is. You all know. And you've always known. Deep down, in the back of your mind, you've always known. And then, through the portal... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Good. Good. <laughs> its mouth opening wide, <laughs> swallowing everything in sight. This big gaping void coming out of a larger void. Yikes. You see Daryl's face is frozen in terror. Oh god, it's already awake! As this hideous pale form emerges from the portal, you realize it does look familiar. There's an entire city in Samwerica named Porphopolis, and the tallest building there shares a visage with the monster you now see. You celebrate Porphmus every year with your friends. Roxa, you once even fought in the Porphodome while on your pre-college road trip. It was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. <laughs> What's less dope is that your entire world's mythology has heralded the coming of this creature. Yikes. And at long last, it's here. You see as Porpho slowly pulls itself through the portal. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you stop? <laughs> can you, hey, could you stop? Uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish everybody listening could have seen the way Paul shook his head. <laughs> <laughs> so as it <laughs> really good as it slowly pulls itself through the portal sassily wagging a finger at you <laughs> Daryl turns towards y'all and says 
That thing ate an entire galaxy, and it wants to devour ours next. Th there's no way to fight it, though. The only way to stop Porfo is to put it back to sleep. Mm. And so, for this climactic drawing challenge, I need you each to draw a way to return Porfo to its eternal slumber. Oh, that shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> uh, let's get to it. Let's roll initiative. Okay. Oh, boy. All right. I got a 13. 13 mm. for Legzy. 12. 12 for Roxa. 14. Wow. <laughs> Great what numbers. Up. Our souls really are linked. Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. um, your souls are linked, but I guess uh, Regina's soul is linked the best. Yeah, it's uh, super linked. It's would, super in there. Would you like to draw first? Regina never backs down. Let's go. Here we go. Let's fucking do it. Regina, you're up first. You step towards this just heaving, wriggling white mass of ethereal flesh that's just shrieking. <laughs> its mouth opening wider and wider as it tries to devour this entire world that you know and love, and you have been tasked with putting it back to sleep. What are you going to do? Well, Caldwell, why don't I draw you a solution? <laughs> draw me a solution, please. <laughs> I would love to. Well, while you are beginning your sketch, let me tell you about what's happening in the room. Yeah, I'd love that. Uh, first and foremost, on your person, you look down and you see that a certain item is, is glowing a little bit. Uh, you reach into your pocket and you see that your friendship bracelet is emitting a slight glow, uh, oh. as if it's like asking to be summoned. My friendship bracelet. <laughs> I forgot I had that. <laughs> <laughs> you see that the friendship bracelet uh, pulses as if in <laughs> Morse code to say, yeah, dummy, I know. <laughs> well, yeah, let's use the friendship bracelet. Why not? <laughs> Hell yeah. So- so, Regina, as a reminder, uh, the friendship bracelet can summon any friend, including those in church camp. Oh. Mm. Oh, we're having a little, <laughs> little hint hint going on here, <laughs> including those in church camp. The bracelet offers only guidance, nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to ta talk more about this drawing that's unfolding right now. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I want to use the friendship bracelet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add that in as well. Great. Um, and I think it actually fits in well with what I'm thinking of here. Mm -hmm. You know I got to summon and Tiffany? Yeah. There's no two ways about it, dude. Can't split that pea. Cannot split that pea, <laughs> as the old saying goes. <laughs> you got two peas in a pod. Can't split them. Cannot split them. There's probably more peas in there. There's actually four peas in this pod. So yeah, I want to summon Tiffany, mm -hmm. uh, my old church camp friend, Caldwell's character, <laughs> never played. <laughs> For sale. For sale, never played. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Legzy. Yes. What are you thinking as you see this big, uh, enormous eldritch creation come out of this portal? Well, number one, I'm pretty upset because it's just the front. So there's no, <laughs> there's not even any legs. There aren't any legs. It's your greatest nemesis. Yeah, it's just a front and mm -hmm. some arms. Yeah. Number two, Legzy can't help but be a little delighted by the sassy finger wag. <laughs> <laughs> it was really it was pretty cute. It's pretty cute. You do get the sense that maybe this uh divine monstrosity from beyond the stars is a little bit of a sassy pants. Yeah. Just... I like that. <laughs> Not enough devourers like have any like personality to them, you know. They're just all about devouring <laughs> all the time. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> you know. Porfo uh puts its hands on its hips and kind of just shakes them around a little bit. Are its hips through the portal yet or not yet. They're okay, so its through. hands just sort of go back into the portal and yeah. does a little wiggle. Mm -hmm. And as it wriggles, the entire earth shakes. Uh, I can't tell uh, at this point, are you wearing like a, a bathing suit or are you just kind of like roughing it in? I'm just roughing it in. Just roughing um, it in. You'll notice that Jonathan is, is a staff again. Oh. I needed Jonathan out with me for this for this maneuver. Oh, shit. I'm um, back, baby. <laughs> damn straight, Jonathan. What I need you for this time is, you know, the thing you're most known for, which is your beautiful singing voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bone Ricard is here as well, as you can see, leaning. Naturally. In a, in a totally normal car position, <laughs> <laughs> leaning upwards. Oh, he's one of those Roger oh, Rabbit-ass cars. It's rearing up. It's, yeah. re it's rearing up, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Boner car is like you know rattling out a <laughs> rattling out a tune on their horn. Uh, yeah, like it's like a horn and like a, sh a bonely a bonely shaking. 
<laughs> this is just like you a baby a monster shaking. truck. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's Boner Car rearing up. So y'all are singing a song, like we're, a lullaby? We're singing, like, and with, with the addition of Tiffany, oh. who is known for singing, you know, hymns. Yes. Beautiful church songs. Probably the most beautiful voice of all of us. Jacob, would you allow me to add Tiffany to this drawing when you're done? Yes, I would love that. that I'm leaving be... a space right here on the left. Oh my goodness, it would uh, be so For flattered. Tiffany to come in. So, um, yeah, Gina is uh, is pauldronless oh. in this one because because Bone Ricard is down <laughs> here and and he's up here. So we still have. See if I can remember sort of what her outfit do. It's cool. What do our outfits do? It's like do? a cool bone corset. Yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a bone belts. corset. It's big time complex. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know she's got like some arm stuff going on, but I don't remember what. Anything that's different, it's just sort of distortion from the portal. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. The dimensional energies. Yeah, it, that that hard light burned mm -hmm. off any details that are missing. And I like to think when you like reverted uh, your pauldrons back into their original forms, it like switched the costume as well a little bit. Yeah, change things up. Why mm -hmm. not? For sure. We, we can play it fast and loose here. So, are you singing like a? A lullaby or a hymn, or is this like a song that uh, Tiffany has sung before? I think it's a song that Tiffany has sung. You know, Gina maybe used to suffer from like some some night terrors. <laughs> I mean, you probably want a certain amount of night terrors. Yeah, you want a certain amount, but she had mm -hmm. too many and it affected her sleep. And whenever she'd get freaked out by a night terror. As a demon, did you have night terrors or night holies? <laughs> Ooh. Well, the night terrors were like. You know, I'm I'm like in a world where like there's no bones. <laughs> it's just a bunch of cute baby angels kissing you. Cute baby angels are kissing <laughs> me, Aww. but <laughs> or like a like a flesh a flesh only creature. Oh, like entering the room, like a flesh blob, like a bunch of those blobfish. Yeah, a bunch of those blobfish. <laughs> Regina just... is terrified of of blobfish. <laughs> they got no bones. They got no bones. Can't do a thing about them. No bones about it. <laughs> uh, that don't that don't fly for Gina. <laughs> Um, Roxa, hmm? what do you think of this immense challenger that has come through the portal? Yo, I'm excited. Yeah. Hell yeah. You getting amped? You getting ready? Oh, you know it. This... Roxa's actually like thinking of a plan. Oh shit. Which never happens. <laughs> oh wow. Uh oh. <laughs> There's like a strong energy being emitted from you that we aren't used to seeing. <laughs> She's literal... in the zone. She's <laughs> in the fight zone. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get in that fight zone. Is there steam coming off of your body? Oh, you know it. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I got, I got like Steaming. small. You know, my my pupils are really small. I'm super mm -hmm. focused. I got that. You know, uh, fog coming off of me. Or yeah. That steam. The signs of a fever to anyone else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean that Roxas is getting ready. Like you're just like punching your fist together, and there's mm -hmm. just echoing vibrations of airwaves as you punch together. Just. Psh, 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 Oh, yeah. You see uh, Daryl and Francis are like cowering in the corner. Actually, Pukinichi is kind of like blocking them both with its tiny skeleton body, just like <laughs> <laughs> trying, do, doing its best to, to protect them uh, from this just hideous beast that is coming through the portal. Um, but it's going to be up to y'all to save uh, the day, the world, actually, rather, as this devourer attempts to eat you and everyone you know and love. I'm pretty sure this song's gonna do it. You think the song's gonna do so, it? Yeah, we won't even have to yeah, I don't think you guys take our turn to, mm -hmm. yeah. to do anything. That's rad. I'm, I'm gonna sing like a really good a really good tune here. What's the name of the song? Coincidentally, mm -hmm. it was uh, Go to Sleep, Interdimensional Devourer. <laughs> which really... I thought was just like a you know, yeah. a, a kid's lullaby name, but right. now it's like really starting to make a lot more sense. Tiffany it... was like, Y'all wanna hear one of the old hymns? Yeah. From before <laughs> word was real. <laughs> <laughs> when time was but a joke. <laughs> uh, Caldwell, do you want to add Tiffany into this? I drawing? would love to. I have an idea. Okay. It really is crazy how much of our world's culture seems to have been impacted by this great devourer, Porfo. Yeah, it's like from beyond time and space. Yeah. Because like it's echoed forwards. Yeah. Uh, from from the past into our world. It's crazy how that happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes shit just echo forward. Through time and space. <laughs> Cosmic horrors be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he in a boy band at some point too? That's wild. Yeah. He's, it's out a whole history. I'll tell you what. Yeah. All right. So I'm getting Tiffany in here. I do think that Tiffany, you know, in addition to having like a, a mace of Pelor, the sun god, I think they have probably like a spectral ukulele they can summon. 
Oh, oh of nice. course. Yeah, mm-hmm. for like campfire sing along. Absolutely. But I think it's like a big ukulele. Well, Tiffany's small, right? Tiffany's yeah. a dwarf. Mm-hmm. But like, don't call it a guitar. <laughs> I a, would never. It's a big uke. It's a book. <laughs> <laughs> a buke. <laughs> a buke. A buke. <laughs> it's my buke, y'all. What y'all think? Oh, Tiffany, what's up? Hey, how's it going? I just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. I just came out of a bracelet. (laughs) What were you up to? I was at church camp. Uh, You know, we were settling down for nap time. Everyone was writing letters to their folks. Uh, You know, Jeremy was a little scared. uh, And and Kristen, you know, was, was fighting. I don't know who those people are. <laughs> oh, you know, it's just some of the campers. Uh, and of course, you know, me and the girls were planning on sneaking out to the mud pits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you do love to get a little muddy sometimes. I do love to get a little you? muddy. I am a dwarf by nature. Oh, I've missed you, Tiffany. <laughs> it's good. What are y'all up to? Trying to stop this sort of inevitable end to all creation oh, would you look at that that yeah. is no good <laughs> yeah yeah not a fan personally i thought maybe you would also uh not not be super into this yeah well this is um a being foretold in uh the the apocalypse myths of my people so i don't much care for it we should do what we can to stop this from devouring the world i'm gonna give tiffany uh pigtails i think for summer oh, oh, yeah. summer oh mm-hmm. that's great again i think you know she was like it's it's she's in like her camp clothing so I think she's probably a little more uh, like loose. You know, she's got just like a T-shirt on. She's wearing like a, a camp whatever this year is. Yeah, Camp Pelor. Yeah, Camp Pelor. <laughs> and she's got like, you know, big hairy arms. They're just playing this like beautiful big uke, this book. Um, but I think since it is like a, um, it's like a holy buke, I think it's got to have like maybe like a wing or something come on, coming off it, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. It's got to be dumb in a in a cool holy way. And my thought is that like when Regina would have her night terrors or her night holies, <laughs> Tiffany would come over and sing uh, songs to kind of like corral uh, the fairies and angels away. <laughs> oh, that's where the wing goes. Mm-hmm. Just, right, just right up there. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No, not that. I just, you know, there are a lot of ways you could put a wing on a buke. <laughs> and I like this one. Thanks, Lexi. I, you know, where, where would you put the wing on your buke? I don't play. Oh, yeah, I could teach you sometime if you want. I would love that. <laughs> Maybe after this is all over, I'll teach you how to play buke. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You yeah. know, you, you've always been spooked to the buke, and I don't understand why. It's just, I think, it, it's one of those things where, a, as a rogue, I have a lot of skills, <laughs> and so anything that falls outside my my wide range of skills uh, is, is scary to me. You I gotta learn to get outside of your comfort zone. I don't like failing. That's why, you know, this year at summer camp, uh, you know, once kids went to bed, I mean, all counselors went down the mud pits, just got wild on drugs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that will get you outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Just tried a lot of new drugs. You know, I'd never done drugs, and then I tried them all at once. Turns out, y'all, I like drugs. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> that's, that's great. I mean, yeah, I... You know, if we had just done drugs, we wouldn't have had to go to the bar, and then we wouldn't have had to go on this whole big adventure. Oh, I like booze, too, now. Absolutely. You know, I've been sneaking it into the Gatorade bottles, and i got to be real careful that I don't give it to the campers. (laughs) That happened to my friend, Kirsten. She accidentally gave some of the campers booze, and, well, she got sent home, unfortunately. So you got to be careful about that. Uh, And that's what I've learned in the Church of Pelor, is you got to be careful when you're, you know, doing disguises for your boozies. Church of Pelor sounds like a party church. <laughs> it's absolutely a party church. <laughs> <laughs> we worship the coming of the sun, the rising of a new day, and we put wings on our guitars. <laughs> U- ukes. Books, sorry. Books. <laughs> absolutely. So let me just get this head a little more on straight. Uh, are there any more holy depictions I should put on this guitar? Maybe like- a Little sun or something. Oh, absolutely. It should just have like- sticker. Oh, actually, what if I just make the whole thing like a sum? Like oh, oh, that I looks like, like that it too. would hurt to hold. Well, it here's does. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing, though. If the song doesn't work, you just beat the shit out of whoever you're, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> whoever you're up against. <laughs> Y'all want some of this flask? Didn't yeah, I, I, I like mean, out. honestly, yeah. <laughs> if we're all going to die, maybe, probably. 
<laughs> so Tiffany and Regina sing Go to Sleep. Is that what the song is called? <laughs> go to Sleep, uh, Interdimensional Devourer. Go to Sleep, Interdimensional Devourer. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go, go to sleep. sleep. Go, go to sleep, go to sleep. Now we enter Mansion Old of Hour. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Nice, go Jonathan. To sleep, go yeah. to sleep, go to sleep. Jonathan. You're doing it. Oh, my goodness. It's go- so good to see you, Jonathan. Oh, yeah, you too. <laughs> Your voice, uh, you still have the voice of an angel, despite being a pile of bones that will never go to heaven. You know what I say? No <laughs> lungs, no problem. <laughs> Bone regard solo. I'm tickled. (laughs) 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 I just realized that you drew. (laughs) She's she's a little further back. Oh, no, she's up on a pedestal. She she comes with her little pedestal. She's on. Oh, who's this? Oh, my goodness. It's Boxy. What? (laughs) Boxy? (laughs) I'm back too. (laughs) Hooray. What? Where? How? (laughs) You must have your whole own story. (laughs) Don't worry about it. (laughs) <laughs> it's complex. Me and Tiffany were hanging out, <laughs> doing drugs in the mud. Well, it sounds like you've been having a nice time. I know people were worried about you. It's great. I'm a camp counselor now. <laughs> That's where the vending machine sends you yep. to be a camp counselor? <laughs> I emerged from the mud, and then they gave me a whistle, and now I hold the dodgeballs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good about this. Hey, <laughs> Tiffany. Yeah, hi. Hi, hi Roxa. How's it going? Oh, my it's, goodness. It's pretty good. Hey, would you have enjoyed uh, a real ugly looking snail as a as a present? You know, no? I, I much prefer a mace, but I would love a snail. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> 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 Uh, Roxa does a little like death pop to herself. She's like, um, Tiffany gives you all friendship bracelets that she made at camp. Oh, Aww. not really my style, but <laughs> I appreciate the sentiment. I'll put mine on my leg. Oh, see, yeah, I made it ankle size for you. Yeah. Uh, Roxa, yours is enormous to fit your wrist size. Oh, it goes on my wrist? <laughs> I thought it was an, it, I thought it was a very tiny necklace. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> Roxy, you didn't lose your sense of humor. I love that. And of course, Regina, yours is just a bunch of bones you can rattle around like a little charm bracelet. Oh, you know what? I do like that. <laughs> I put it on my horn. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's beautiful. I rattle what, it you jangle it around. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been good. I'm going to keep playing my buke. Woo! <laughs> and now it's time for another person to draw. It me. It you. It, it me. Legsy, are you ready to draw or would you like to defer? I will do it. Do it up. Legsy, you're in it. Yeah. So you see Tiffany and Regina just going to town, making some beautiful music, and and you see Porfo's eyes start to get a little heavier. You see kind of, uh, it starts blinking a little more. (laughs) Shakes it off, though, and then starts trying to pull itself forward once more. Uh, What are you going to do to stop this terrifying beast? Uh, I have have an idea. Okay. I have a, 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 a bit of an idea. Just trying to think of like stuff that put Legsy to sleep. Mm-hmm. Trying to see if that'll if that'll work on this creature. So yeah, <laughs> Porfo just like it's like listening. <laughs> yeah, chilling intently. in the foreground here. Yeah, here. So Porfo is sort of like go ahead. I'll bite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Porpo does not look into this, whatever you've chosen yeah, to do. So we've got, as as we've established, there's like a bit of a, a hologram situation we've got here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So I think- Are you going to hack the gram? I'm going to hack the gram. Fuck. Uh, I took some <laughs> hacker classes at Rogue School. So Legsy is going to do what would always put her to sleep, is a long lecture. Oh, <laughs> So Legsy is going to be presenting uh, sort of a, a, a bit of a, a, a on-the-spot, improvised- Seminar. Le- seminar. Mm-hmm. On what topic? On why you should go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the benefits of sleep. Yeah, the benefits of sleep. Well, to understand sleep, you need to first understand the REM cycle yeah. uh, and kind of the inherent, uh, you know, day yeah, Legsy circadian doesn't... rhythms that- one must undertake to accurately recharge yeah. their body. Yeah, there's mm. there's going to be a whole. This is a multi part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah, let's get. The... Is there a PowerPoint? I guess that's oh, what the hollow. Yeah, it's a hollow. It's a hollow point. <laughs> oh fuck! 
Lexi not is... only a dangerous bullet, but, yeah, but also <laughs> an incredible <laughs> multimedia technology. <laughs> um, so, Roxa, mm. while Lexi is delivering this devastating lecture, um, lecture, uh, nice. you feel something wriggling in your pocket. Oh. Uh, you reach in there and you see that the skin cloak mm-hmm. is kind of poo poo, poo poo, poo poo. Oh, I'm getting ready, skin cloak. There's some sort of like phantom blood pulsing through it. Oh, you know it, skin cloak. It's your time. <laughs> <laughs> it's your time and you know it. The skin cloak kind of nods at you. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Rox, what is that? Uh, Are you keeping that in your pocket? Y- is it alive? I thought it wasn't, but. Oh, God. Yeah. Is it that someone's feel skin? I don't... Rox, did you take that off a person? No. I, w- <laughs> I won it. <laughs> uh... I believe I... this came from the vending machine. I won it from a vending machine. <laughs> Is that what it means when you get things from a vending machine? Vending machines are random, right? You just kind of win it. <laughs> Well, as... you, sh- you shake them around, and like w- the thing that falls out is the thing that you want, right? Yeah, when you play the game, test. yeah. <laughs> when you play the game, punch a vending machine. Uh, it is a game. Yeah, there is a win and a lose state. I guess the lose state is going to jail, <laughs> but the win state is chips. Yeah, or this cloak. Or Although this I think cloak. I, I think I paid for this cloak, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You see, the skin cloak reaches out toward Bone Ricar and uh, Jonathan the Bone Staff, and just kind of like. <laughs> No, you stay away from them. <laughs> Don't you dare, skin cloak. I have plans for you. No skin on these bones. The skin cloak recedes back into your pocket. <laughs> I love Lexi's little face. You're really giving it your all. I'm trying. I'm really trying to, <laughs> to sell this. Uh, okay, so we've got to get some some slides, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, some holographic slides that are just sort of like appearing. It's so funny to be in a college classroom where there are holographic slides but still be bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just summoning them from a crystal, but it's still just like about, you know, medieval European history. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep in you. Okay, great. So we got part one of, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Porfo is thinking, why did I audit this class? <laughs> I love that you're using your leg as a little uh, yeah, pointer a stick. Little That's pointer perfect. Stick. Maybe Jeffers is here too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Doing, uh, doing some pointing. Now I have to imagine there's some like bad stock photos that barely apply. Yeah, Jeffers. Jeffers has a little, just a little stand <laughs> with some with some figures, <laughs> some graphs, some yeah, numbers. This is, this is the sleep the sleep number system. Sleep numbers. <laughs> <laughs> And as, you, as you can see, <laughs> as as sleep goes up, uh-huh. so do numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't argue with the data is the thing. <laughs> Are you just trying to sell Porfo a mattress? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just get just a picture of a bed. Like It's just a stock photo of a bed. <laughs> uh-huh. Bed equals for sleep. Yeah. <laughs> bed equal good? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, if you show me a picture of a bed, I will want to go to sleep. <laughs> That's a very good point. It just reminds me that I have one of those and I can get in it and sleep. I mean, this is why advertising works, because a lot of time I'll see something I want in a picture and then I'll be like, I would like that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like if I see a picture of a sandwich, I will desire a sandwich. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I think that was the exact speech that Don Draper gives in uh, season seven of Mad <laughs> 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 If you show people a picture of what they want, they'll want that. He's a genius. <laughs> He was always a genius. So you see Porfo getting sleepier and sleepier. Do you go through all 100 slides? Um, I I definitely yeah. I think I'm I'm gonna try to. We'll mm-hmm. see what uh. I think I, I get through like the first maybe 10 mm-hmm. before uh Roxa jumps in. Yeah, I'm gonna roll a dice to see if Francis and Daryl fall asleep. <laughs> we still have to sort of deal with the fact that Francis did a big betrayal of us. I'm going to beat that dude's ass. Yeah. (laughs) You see uh, that Francis is asleep. I rolled a 15. So, yeah, you can talk openly about beating his ass and he won't notice. I would talk openly about beating his ass regardless (laughs) of his consciousness. Yeah, I kind of wish he was still awake so that we could talk openly about beating his ass. I whisper in his ear, I'm going to beat your ass. Huh? (laughs) I'm going to beat your ass so bad, dude. 
you see that he's like nuzzled up against Daryl, uh, and like he's got a little smile on his face. He doesn't even seem to notice. That's real cute, but it's not going to be cute when you're asking. <laughs> he's just to happy be. that his brother's back. <laughs> he just did it all to save his brother. You gotta. I mean, I appreciate. I would do. I would do some deception to save one of you guys. <laughs> were they? They weren't brothers, were they? Are they brothers? Are they brothers or just lab partners? I guess. I thought there was romantic interest there. Oh, maybe. Um, they're snuggled pretty close together, Legsy. <laughs> They're snuggle brothers, that's for sure. <laughs> I guess Legsy had her own head cannon, but <laughs> Legsy misread the situation. Legsy super misread the situation. Wouldn't be the first time. Aww. Won't be the last. Legsy got the Funimation Sailor Moon dub. <laughs> 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 oh, we have to find my brother, Daryl. <laughs> I love him because he is my brother. <laughs> oh, one more slide coming in. Yeah, this is just a nice little. Mm. Now, I think that, do you think that um, Tiffany and Regina are providing, like, the soundtrack to this presentation now? Well, I guess the, they're still singing, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is happening. Maybe they're, like, harmonizing with your presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep and you, part one of 100, bed equals good, go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they do not have the right number of legs here. It doesn't um, matter. It, de- it never mattered. It couldn't matter less. <laughs> There's one more. At least now it's an even number of legs. Um, I'm going to go and roll a dice to see how sleepy Porfo's feeling. That's a four. <laughs> <laughs> So that's not sleepy. So pretty sleepy. So so th- he's actually very interested. <laughs> I made it too engaging. Oh no! Dang it! <laughs> it's too good. I love hollow points. <laughs> I love hollow points. <laughs> Can you just play Porfo from now. <laughs> I love all of my It's so engaging. <laughs> you do see that Porfo like is following along intently. At the very least, you've distracted. You've distracted it. So yeah. like you've got that going for you. So I think like what you've done is you've kind of perfectly between the music and the hollow point, you've perfectly distracted Porfo. Uh you've kind of like set up the perfect shot for Roxa to hop in here and just do some damage. Hell Great. Yes. All right. Roxa. Ready to put this thing to sleep? Oh, you know it. Hell yeah. Let's go, baby. Ugh. Roxa. Yes. You step up to Porfo. I immediately throw the skin cloak on DJ. <laughs> Yay! Let's go! <laughs> Not wasting a fucking second. Not a second. Um, I imagine that's what you're going to be drawing as a team up between you and Demon Johnny. Oh, you know it. Fuck yeah. So you throw this skin cloak on. It wraps around uh, the skull pauldron giving it flesh and form, and then all of a sudden standing before you is your old boyfriend, Demon Johnny. Is his bingus out? (laughs) (laughs) His bingus is fully out. (laughs) Can I roll to look at his bingus? Absolutely. Okay, let's see. That's a 13. 13 13 on bingus look. 13, you peep the bingus. Nice, yes. (laughs) Gina peeps the bingus, and it's like the high point of her adventure so far. You see that Demon Johnny, hold on. Rolls of four does not see you peep the bingus. That's the best situation for bingus <laughs> peeping. Uh, Demon Johnny's too distracted by seeing Roxa again. He says, Roxa, is that you? Uh, oh. <laughs> Wait. oh. How does that is Demon Johnny sound? <laughs> I like on. that. Yeah, I like this romantic boy Roxa, voice. Roxa, is that you? <laughs> Wait, I got it. Roxa, is that you? Oh, he's got a bit of an accent. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna have to rethink my design if this is the uh, <laughs> if this is the voice you're giving him. <laughs> you could you know what? He can have any voice you want. You know what? I'm going to stick with that voice. It's just going okay. to be um, very different <laughs> from the design, and that's even funnier. I think that's good. Also, here's something. Yes. Um, I thought maybe, again, maybe Legsy has once again misread something. I thought Demon Johnny and uh, Gina were like, Cousins, <laughs> they all cousins. That is right. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're cousins. You just, you just like to peep the bingus. So oh you're... shit, I shouldn't have peeped the bingus. <laughs> <laughs> oh dang it! Oh, Let me do no. another roll to see. If oh, Demon I forgot Johnny touches about you. that. That's a three. Still doesn't see yeah. you peeping. <laughs> okay, that's a. <laughs> well, listen, it's a, it's a bingus peep and like a, you know, nice, nice job, cousin. <laughs> yeah, just like, rocking. I'm proud of you. Fa- proud of the the family jewels as proud of the family bingus. Oh, Regina, my cousin, how are you? <laughs> Oh, doing great, Johnny. Nice bingus. Dude. Demon Johnny walks over, bingus a wagon. 
Gives you a big hug. It's so good to see you. Oh, don't hug me. Put on some clothes, man. Why are you smiling? (laughs) This is not. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I'm naked. I think you've maybe been a pauldron for long enough that you've forgotten what it's like to wear clothes. It's true. My my legs are quite unsteady. We've, uh... We've just reached the portion of my presentation about uh, <laughs> the effect of sleep on Bingus health. <laughs> <laughs> Could you use some of your bone magic to perhaps summon some clothes for me? Some bone clothes? Some bone clothes. Oh, hell yeah, dude. You know, you don't even have to ask twice about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gina summons up some sort of like bone armor for Demon Johnny. Amazing! <laughs> Sorry, Julia. <laughs> that doesn't have to have happened yet in could the drawing. You, no, could it's Could you perhaps happened. summon up a... <laughs> it's just a skull right on the crotch. <laughs> Nothing else. I'm determined to not change the idea I had for what DJ looks like. Um, and now it's just... It's just going to be a mess, and well, I hope either, you're ready for that. Uh, either his ready. bingus is out or he's got bone <laughs> armor. The choice is... Yours. Right, Gina, I noticed that you just gave me a top of armor, but my bingus is still out. <laughs> you were always the prankster. <laughs> Could you just give me a pair of bone chinos? Bone chinos. Some bone slacks. Gina, I'm begging you. <laughs> I give him bone jorts. <laughs> nice. Ah, some boards. Wonderful. <laughs> Why are you even bored? How do I draw that? You don't have to draw any of these things we're saying. No. <laughs> so Demon Johnny and Regina go through a quick wardrobe change, eventually settling on something uh, light and breezy and easy to draw. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Demon Johnny walks over to you, Roxa. Roxa, it's so good to see you. I hope I've served you well. Yeah. I mean, you've been you've been holding them sandwiches pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> been holding all the anime. You had a uh, how was uh how was hanging out with uh, Paul Blart? He is a consummate gentleman. <laughs> That's we good. watched so much anime together. I'm I'm glad. Seems like you made a friend. I'm glad about that. Oh, the, I where is he now? I don't I don't remember. We had he to became set him all Blart. Free. We had to set him free. We he became all Blart. He Rocks. All it was Blart. rad. You don't remember? King of the Mall. This is good. This is the fate that he told me he wished for. That's Often, good. while we were eating sandwiches and watching Cutie Honey. <laughs> <laughs> what even is that? Is that good? It is an anime from the 80s. <laughs> oh, is that something that we should be watching? Or like... Yeah, we should check it out. It's pretty good. It's a little dated, but it's fun. Okay. You know, it's no gun buster, but it's all right. And we were watching that, and he was telling me about his dreams. And he dreamed to lead an entire squadron of mall cops. And you're telling me that he's achieved his dreams. Capital! <laughs> <laughs> now, who wants sandwiches? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> me, me, ooh. me, me, <laughs> Johnny, oh, yes. Oh, to you. Oh. You see Demon Johnny also throw some sandwiches at Porfo, uh, and you see that the sandwiches are full of turkey. The sleepy food. <laughs> it is the sleepy food. Get some tryptophan. Nice. You see that he looks back at all of you and says, it's the sleepy food. <laughs> yeah, Johnny. Nice. Johnny was always my coolest cousin. <laughs> oh, look at his cool hair. Oh, wow. He's so fucking cool. He's going to have some cool hair. I love it. I love when the characters have cool hair. <laughs> He's got like more like bull horns. I like that. Mm-hmm. Like coming out the sides. Yeah, it sort of matches his skull. Yeah. So does he have like a... A more demon form, and that's maybe what the skull that we saw before was. Yeah, he probably is like yeah, cause transformational. The, yeah, because the skull had more of sort of a snout mm-hmm. on it. But whereas, I like this. Yeah, this this face is nice. <laughs> oh, look at this friend. Capital. <laughs> <laughs> so, Roxa, hmm? what are we to do about this menace before us? Um, I, don't know, I thought you were going to be helping me with that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. Let me think of something. You know, um, (laughs) I thought your uh, your engineering degree could help me get the proper uh, trajectory on like the best downward punch to like punch Porfo back into the into the thing he's crawling out of. Finally, this shall be my greatest assignment yet. Uh, And you see that Demon Johnny pulls out a pencil uh, magically. Uh, and yes, you see at the end that there is a little eraser shaped like a sandwich. <laughs> and they start just drafting the perfect trajectory for what they are calling Roxas Ultimate Punch. Yes. 
the ultimate rocks of power punch. They they start building you a, a trebuchet that you can be launched from so you can get like perfectly airborne. They develop like a special lightweight gauntlet for you. They're doing this all very fast, which is very impressive because th th this is a room full of uh, lab equipment and supplies and materials. So they're just grabbing stuff from all corners of the room. Don't worry, uh, I'm only halfway through my presentation, <laughs> so you've you got time. <laughs> also, Paul. I realize I should have called it a bed talk. <laughs> <laughs> Better late than never, yeah, Lexi. That's, at, around halfway <laughs> through, I'm like, by the way, this is a bed talk. <laughs> Lexi, just start it over. Oh, <laughs> I'm just going to start. Sorry, yeah, uh, I got to start it. <laughs> okay. That Hi, I'm Lexi Shortstack. Welcome to my bed talk. We're in. <laughs> Brilliant pun. I love it. Ha <laughs> ha. Jonathan the Bone Staff isn't the only one that enjoys a good pun. Ha <laughs> ha. Now let's build a trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> Demon Johnny rules. <laughs> I want someone this proper and excited about everything <laughs> in my life. I feel like to date Roxa, you know, you got to have some some strong convictions or something. There's got to be some sort of strength that uh, Roxa sees in you and admires. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's his. He's so positive. He's got yeah. mental strength and positivity, but also just like absolutely killer abs. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You need to have a resilient bod. Mm -hmm. So shredded. Yeah. He's smart and ripped. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> bingus. <laughs> Let's not forget the bingus. <laughs> <laughs> the total package. The total package. <laughs> it's got it all. I call this trebuchet the bingus. <laughs> <laughs> He's still got that crass sense of humor, though, the that I love so flingus. much. The bingus flingus. Yeah. <laughs> In this situation, Rox, you're the bingus, <laughs> and you got to get flingus. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. So, you know, for a creature that's got red skin, you're so blue. Ha <laughs> ha. You got a flingus because you don't have a wingus. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk to Demon Johnny. Is there anything else I can help you with to perfect your punch? Uh, kiss, some, kiss, so kiss, 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 kiss. Ah, kiss. yes, of course. The power and inspirational energy that comes from love. I just wanted some positive reinforcement. But that's, yeah, we can do that too. He kisses you. <laughs> Aw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does Rox blush? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, He's like, you, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go do this. You see Demon Johnny says, you're the strongest person I've ever known. And your strength comes not just from within, but from your friends and from the exploits that shall carry you to the end of your days. He oh, kisses Johnny. you one more time. That was beautiful. <laughs> Johnny, that was that was so nice. <laughs> now punch the hell out of this big marshmallow. Oh, I'm excited too. <laughs> so he builds you this trebuchet. You, you jump in? Oh, you know it. All right. <laughs> Without hesitation. <laughs> the trebuchet launches into the air. You put on your special gauntlet. Um, you see it starts to like light up. Arcane energy starts focusing around this gauntlet. It forms this like magical cone of pure force and you just start rocketing down towards Porfo like an asteroid re-entering the atmosphere. Doom. Legsy, how far into your lecture are you? Uh, I think something something m messed up and uh, it was actually one of the slides just got switched with this figure so <laughs> Porfo <laughs> sees this figure of Roxa being flung towards him uh. and is a little confused. And then actual Roxa actually <laughs> smashes into him. Wow! Roxa smashes into him, punches its goddamn lights out. It falls to the ground. <laughs> Not dead, <laughs> but unconscious. You hear snores emanating from it like a freight train. Uh, just bubbles popping out of its weird jawless mouth. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Little guys tuckered out. <laughs> My next slide was sleep is a great way to recover from being punched really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think Porfo like hears you say that slide and kind of like nods to itself uh, yeah. as it enters this coma that you put it into. Sweet dreams, buddy. Um, you see Daryl and Francis like jump up and they're like, "Oh my gosh, you did it! You you did it! This is amazing!" And they they hug again and they make out and like look at Legsy and say, "Yeah, 
Yeah, that was the deal. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's fine. I yeah. Uh, two brothers reunited. <laughs> wow, goblin culture sure is <laughs> sure is affectionate towards family members. Gina, can you explain this to him? <laughs> so, no, dude, I gotta beat your ass first. Ah! Not explaining <laughs> shit. So you walk over to start beating Francis's ass as Porfo slumbers next to the portal. But before you can get there and give him the walloping that he deserves. Porfo's skin begins to bubble. What? And you see hundreds of small Porfo babies Ugh. begin to spill off of its flesh and just fill the room. No, thank you. No, no, no. Send them back. They start rushing towards you, and you see Daryl says, Oh, no. Its body is resisting. We have to get it back through the portal. You see Francis uh, puts a hand on Daryl's shoulder and says, don't worry, babe, I got this. And he pulls out his gun, cocks it, it flips and turns into a cell phone. Uh, he dials a number real quick and says, yeah, get over here as soon as you can. Suddenly, seconds later, the door to the lab bursts open and you see Buttercup, the hoofer driver, carrying Dennis, the shapeshifter, the Pugilax, which is now mounted on Gregory Hamilton's body, the Paul Blart Mall Squad, and all of your fucking dads burst through the wall. Yeah, yeah. dad squad. <laughs> You watch excitedly as the Blarts, Pugilax, and Dennis join up with Pukanichi and all start fighting the Porflings. As they duke it out, your dads rush to your side. Quadzo puts his hand on Legsy, Fillard hugs Roxa, and Regina, your dad gives you Eskimo horns. Oh, Dad, that's nice, but this was kind of my adventure. Ah, you come on, you, sweetie. You always do this yeah, thing. Like, whenever on. I'm on an adventure, you show up and want to finish the adventure. <laughs> and it's like, no, let me do it this time. I'm going to let you finish the adventure, hon. Uh, Just wanted to give you a little help. You know, you got your hands full with this interdimensional being that wants to devour our whole world. So that's kind of my problem, too, you know? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Regina, did we ever give your dad a name? No. <laughs> I don't think I like he's. That, I think he's unnameable. Yeah, I like that. To all of your friends, it's just Regina's dad. <laughs> yeah, his name is really hard to pronounce in uh, common tongue. So <laughs> you just call him Mister Regina's dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girls, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I've been better. Oh, uh, sure, sure. It's don't... nice to. It's nice to see you guys. Oh, it's great to see you. You know, uh, Francis called us. You know, we got his. Uh, uh, we got his number through the old phone tree, the old uh, questing logs. You know how it is, and uh, I... we decided to show up and uh, give you all a hand. Did you know that Francis was tricking us this whole time? Oh uh, no, didn't hear about that. I just got a. You know, got a special red phone uh, in the infernal layer that I work in, uh, and it started going off. So I just knew it was a special request. So I don't know anything more than that. Who's that guy? Is that Francis? Yeah, this is Francis, and his not. Not his brother? Yeah, sweetie, they're in love. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> he pats you on the head. <laughs> All right. So uh looks like we got our hands full. Uh you you ready, gang? You see that uh Mr. Regina's dad uh <laughs> looks at Quadzo and Fillard, and they'll kind of nod. They pound their fists and start walking forward. Quadzo pulls enchanted mannequins from a bag of holding. Uh, Gina's dad unleashes an army of skeletons, and Fillard summons a massive spiritual arm from the pages of a book. They all rush forward and start pushing Porfo back through the portal. And as you all run after them to help, you see Daryl uh, stops you and says, You three stay on the platform. I can use your link to banish it to a dimension far away where it can never reach us. Is that gonna... Is it gonna burn again? Is that gonna do anything to us? Because... You didn't really get our permission for this last yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you, if you focus on each other and know that it's coming, you can control it a little better this time. I promise. Okay. Just focus on something that's important to you, and I'm, you'll be all right. I still want to beat Francis's ass. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. I understand. Okay. Don't beat him too hard because okay. I love him. But yeah. like, no, for sure. Yeah. This whole thing sucks. Uh, you can like, I'll, you can absolutely give him a dead arm for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you get it back on the platform. Yep. Cool. Uh, so you load back onto this platform. What do you What do you think about uh, as you're on this platform as it begins whirring up? We want to send it somewhere. Yeah, but you need to just like focus on something that'll keep it from burning you. Oh. So we have to focus on our on, on, some, on each other on each other on our connection and our bond. There okay. You go. So you three focus on each other as opposed to having to like reach out into this void. You find each other instantly. Uh, it doesn't burn at all. You've perfectly mastered this system. Like you are the perfect link. Aw, you guys. You guys were the perfect link. 
Rocks. Um, high five. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't high five. Oh, okay. Air five. Low five? <laughs> you can do like a brain five. Brain five. Brain five. So as you three brain five, in your mind's eye, you see this golden door opening up and pure light pours out from it. And as this happens, uh, a green button lights up on Daryl's console. He types in a set of coordinates, then smashes the button, uh, and then the portal image shifts to a totally different reality. A vast expanse of unknown stars and planets greets your gaze, and for a moment you all take in the beauty of this nameless vista. Sensing their cue, the dads all make one final push and start launching Porfo through the newly opened portal. But at the last minute, <gasps> its eyes light up, and a strange rune appears on its forehead. Uh-oh. Daryl glances up, his face filled with a familiar fear. Oh, no. Suddenly, Porfo's body begins to spasm wildly. Its hands flail, knocking your dads to the side. <gasps> Dad! Lexi! Dad! Lexi! <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Lexi! I'll be fine! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it then looks up at you three and smiles. Uh-oh. Before you can respond, Porfo grabs you... <gasps> and drags you through the portal. Oh, uh, stop. No. And that's where we'll end our session. Oh, oh, I've had on. enough of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming with us on this journey. We have one episode of Draga left. <gasps> Let's do it. One final episode to set things right. Things are looking bad for the Ladies Book Club, but I have faith that they can pull it off. Again, Thanks so much for listening. It's been a real treat and a pleasure. Until next time, we're very sorry. 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 Hello, friends. If you enjoyed that episode of Drawfee, you should know that the best way to support us is to sign up for Dropout. For less than the cost of a very mediocre sandwich per month, you will get access to Drawfee videos a week early. You can talk to us on the Discord, and also there's exclusive series you can watch like Nathan's very own Cartoon Hell and Dimension 20. Uh, if you're interested, sign up at dropout.tv for a free trial, and I will put you on my list of very good boys, which I read every night before bed, and I give individual kisses to each name on the list.